In this video, we will look at how to use Excel to calculate return on marketing investment. Pretty simply, what we're looking to do is work out what happens when we run a campaign from a financial perspective. So with the profits we make without a campaign, we then invest in a campaign and spend some money, and hopefully we generate additional profits. So we've got to work out, does the extra profits cover the campaign costs and what return do we make? So let's look at this example. A brand sells 10,000 units normally without any campaigns. Their price is $20. Their cost of the product is five. So their product profit margin is $15 per unit. Means that in a normal period of time, they make $150,000. However, for the coming period, they spent $20,000 in advertising online. During this period, they sold 12,000 units. Okay, so we've got to work out, did the extra profit cover the $20,000? So let's go to Excel to have a look. I've just copied that example here, so it's in sitting in front of us. And I've set up basically what we need to look at. We need to say, okay, what is the profit without the campaign? That's sales and profits in our normal period. And that's going to be our baseline, our point of comparison to what we're doing in the campaign period. So with and without the campaign, and then what's the difference? So we start off by working out, well, what would we normally make? So in this case, uh, we would normally make, I'm just going to, Arrows and uh, commas and that normally would make ten thousand dollars of sales. Our price is twenty. Our cost is five. So that tells us straight away our margin is fifteen. Okay. So to our gross profit, and I'm I'm using this slightly different terminology to accounting. So what's our our profit before contribution of the product before any other sort of marketing costs? is our $15 times our 10,000 in sales. So it's going to bring in 150,000. In this case, because it's without a campaign, there is absolutely no campaign cost. So that's really $150,000 profit contribution, which goes to the organization or to the brand. In the campaign period, what happened? Well, we now we sold 12,000. So again, I'm just going to sorry format the, the commas just in case makes it a bit easier to read. Our price and our cost haven't changed. Okay, so we so I just drag that across. Our profit at a gross point now appears to be thirty thousand dollars more, but we spent twenty thousand, so I've got to put that in, and I'll just drag that formula across, which is just that minus that. So we've made an extra $10,000. A couple of ways, things we could look at. Look at what's called a promotional lift. What's the percentage of increase in sales? So it's just 12 divided by the 10,000. Take away one to get a percentage. I then turn that into a percentage. So sales have increased 20% as a result of the campaign. There's no changes uh, here, but we've gone the difference there, 30,000 from top level revenue or what appears to be profit, extra profit coming in. But we have spent $20,000 generating that. That gives a, a net extra profit of $10,000. Our return on marketing investment is simply the extra profit divided by what, what we what we spent, which is the $20,000. I turn that into a percentage, and you can see we have a 50% return on investment. Okay, so that is one example. Let's now go to a second example. This one's a bit trickier. I've just gone back into PowerPoint. It's the same brand, so we've got the same setups or starting position. But instead of spending money on advertising, they've discounted the product. Okay, so they've taken it from 20 down to 15 and takes their margin down. So 
they sold a lot of products, 16,000. So let's have a look at how effective that might be. Let's go back into Excel. Okay, I've just taken that example back into Excel. We've got the same firm as last time, so those numbers are sitting there already. So in the campaign, we now know that they sold 16,000 units. However, their price was not 20, but 15. So basically, their margin was only $10. So their net profit was $10 times the uh, sales volume. So in this case, they've made an extra $10,000. Previous example, we worked out the campaign cost and we subtracted that because that was an extra cost payable to the advertising company or wherever we place the media. In this case, the money's already deducted. So watch that 160, okay? Well, normally we'd sell at 20, okay? So we're normally uh, we would have got in 240,000 on that level of sales, but we're selling it at 15. So the cost of the discount is already incorporated in the cash flow. Okay, so we don't need to then deduct it again. Now the tricky thing in discounts is working out what was put at risk. So the simple way of, of doing this, if I just copy across to another column, just move that out of the way, is what did we risk? Now we guaranteed or normally get 10,000 in sales. So let's assume they're coming in anyway and we're on track to make that. However, we've cut our price to $15. And instead of getting $150, we're now getting only $100. So we, um, through this decision, have this for the first 10,000 sales, where we would normally get $150, we're only getting $100, so we have risked $50,000. So I've set that as the same number as that. Because it hasn't worked, in theory, if this is just a benchmark for us, we could be $50,000 worse off. So that's actually our marketing investment. Okay, because if it doesn't work, that's the downside. And basically, our return on marketing investment is our extra $10,000, and then divided by the potential loss of profit if the discount doesn't work, gives us a 20% return on investment. So they're, they're the two examples. Discounting is a little bit more tricky. The promotional one from the previous is pretty straightforward, but Excel's pretty handy for working out these fairly straightforward calculations.